Hello, everybody. Welcome to the overview of the SEMA certification webinar. Uh, my name is Gray Bullard. Uh, I'm an enrollment counselor here at the Investments and Wealth Institute. Just going to wait a few seconds here while people start logging into the webinar. Uh, see a, a number of folks logging in now. Um, I'm joined on the call right now with my colleague, Carrie Estes, uh, and we have a great special guest for you today. Uh, Jim Dobbs is with the Yale School of Management. He is the SEMA and the CPWA Program Director for the Yale School of Management. Um, we're going to uh, introduce Jim in a little bit. We're going to give you a little bit of an overview of the presentation, but again, I just want to wait a few seconds here. Folks are logging in. Um, Please also, if you have any questions, uh, there is a chat feature now uh, that's live that you can uh, type where you're calling in from. Uh, if you have any questions along the way, because we're going to have a few minutes at the end of the webinar for questions. So good. I see everybody starting to log in here again. Uh, please uh, type any questions or any comments you have in the chat. Uh, we can make this as interactive as possible. We're going to have uh, an opportunity at the end of the webinar to answer some questions for you. Uh, like I said, Jim Dobbs is on the call and he's going to help answer some questions uh, with the Yale School of Management. All right, let's get going here. So again, my name is Gray Bullard. I'm joining the call with Carrie Estes and Jim Dobbs. Uh, this is the overview of the SEMA or the Certified Investment Management Analyst Certification. Uh, this is our contact information. I'd encourage you to take a snapshot of this. Uh, Carrie and I can answer any questions you may have uh, after the webinar as well. There's also will be a link for you to schedule some time on our calendars to talk to you for 15 minutes or a half hour or so to answer questions about the Institute here, the Investments and Wealth Institute, the SEMA certification, or any other designations that we have. We also manage the Certified Private Wealth Advisor and the Retirement Management Advisor as well. So you may have some questions uh, on how those designations may help you and your, your practice. So today's webinar, all lines are muted. Uh, any questions you have, please type them into the chat. Tell us where you're dialing in from across the country. Um, this webinar is recorded, so you're going to get a recording of this to uh, the email that you registered with. Uh, no CE hours for this. Uh, this is just an overview of the SEMA. Um, so let's kick it off here. So I just want to give you an overview of the Investments and Wealth Institute. As you can see, we have a mission here. We are a nonprofit association based on our membership, and our mission is to deliver premier investment consulting and wealth management credentials, uh, the SEMA, the R uh, CPWA, and the RMA designation, and uh, world-class education. Uh, and that's what Jim's on the call for today. He's going to talk a little bit about the Yale School of Management uh, online uh, SEMA certification. Um, he's going to get into and answer any questions that you may have on the Yale program. So this is just a bit of an overview here. Uh, these, we, uh, as an association, we have over 18,000 members here, uh, most of which have our certifications. Um, we offer conferences throughout the year. Uh, we just came back from our uh, national conference in Las Vegas a couple weeks ago. Uh, we had uh, uh, close to seven or 800 advisors there uh, uh, looking to get information and, and network and get continuing education at our conferences and a number of sponsors. Uh, from asset managers uh, and firms across the country to help talk to our, some of our advisors as well. Um, as I mentioned, we have three certifications here. We have the SEMA, which is what you're on the call today for, the CPWA and the RMA program. Uh, they are, uh, um, uh, we have over uh, 8,000 SEMAs in, in, over across the world, uh, 32, over 3,200 CPWAs and over 350 RMA certificates uh, in the Institute here. We have podcasts, we have webinars throughout the year, so I encourage you to join those as well. Uh, when you do, uh, after you enroll, you do get free membership with us, so it's something that you'll have at your disposal as well and getting information as an advisor. So this is where I wanted to get a little bit this of the SEMA uh, program overview here. So they're, they're, this is the core curriculum. This is what you're going to be uh, over the next five or six months studying. Uh, learning about portfolio consulting and, and, and portfolio construction, but it starts all the way at the beginning here. You start focusing on the fundamentals, right? Statistics and methods, learning about global capital markets, uh, learning about applied finance and economics, sort of a general overview being very broad in the beginning. Uh, and then you get to sort of focus in a little bit on what are the investments and the instruments you can use 
uh, in the portfolio construction process, right? What makes up a portfolio? Well, equities, right? Fixed income, alternative investments, uh, options and futures, real, real assets. Those are the alternative investments that you would help build on the traditional fixed income and equity portfolio. Um, and then we move into the portfolio theory and behavioral finance section. This is studying uh, things like uh, types of portfolio theories, uh, models, uh, behavioral finance is, is intertwined in all three of our designations. It's a major part of uh, uh, any sort of financial advisory practice or family office. What uh, how, do, how do consumers and investors tend to get let their emotions and let their biases get in the way of how they invest rationally? Uh, it's a big part of the program. And then different investment philosophies, styles, and tools. How you know, you know, you look at different types of portfolio management styles and strategies. Are they, you know, large cap growth? Are they small cap, you know, value? What types of, you know, how do they lean a little bit in terms of how they invest? That's another thing. And then you moved into the um, the risk and return section. So attributes of risk, risk measurement, um, performance, uh, performance measurement and attribution. And then of course, finally, you're gonna pull it all together and get into the portfolio consulting and, con and, and construction process. So this is where you pull together the investment policy statement for the client. Um, you're looking at different manager search and selection. So as you're pulling together your portfolio, you may have external managers that are managing certain sleeves of your portfolio, whether it's emerging markets or large cap uh, value or large cap growth. You may have other managers where uh, you bring in. You may have heard of the concept of outsource CIO where you're outsourcing a lot of your investments as well. So this is everything. This is These are the five um, uh, core curriculum components that you're going to study and each one of these five has subtopics underneath that you're going to get very involved with as you go through the study materials uh, over the next uh, five or six months or so. That's about as long as the program will take you to get through to, to self-study and then all the way through to the um, to the uh, to the capstone and then to the uh, final exam, the certification exam. Excuse me. So I want to move on to the next slide here. I want to get into uh, this is the detailed content outline. So I know this is a bit of an eye chart, but um, uh, in some of these pages, but this is this is the breakout of those five core curriculum components that I showed you, right? There's the fundamentals there, number one, statistics and methods. Under that, there are five subtopics. And then, of course, applied finance, uh, economics, then each one. We can provide this uh, detailed content outline to you. It's on our website. Um, but again, reach out to us if you can't find it, navigating through our website. Carrie and I would be happy to share it with you uh, as well. So I wanted to uh, now introduce our, 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 our special guest, uh, Jim Dobbs, as you can see here. Um, he has been with the SEMA and CPWA program for a number of years. Jim uh, was also a financial advisor himself, so he's a practitioner. Um, he was also with the Investments and Wealth Institute as Director of Education. So Jim brings a, a large wealth of information and, and, and experience with our certifications here, not only with the SEMA, but CPWA as well as he was one of the... Uh, uh, creators of that certification as well. So I wanted to introduce Jim and, and thanks Jim very much for uh, for joining our talk today. Well, thanks, Greg. Can you see and hear me okay? Yes. Wonderful. No, it's great uh, to be here and happy to talk a little bit about uh, the Yale program, just so you can kind of get a, a an inside look as to what you would experience. Kind of would just set the expectations if you choose us to go through Hey, look, we've been doing this, I think this is our eighth year now. We've gone over 3,000 candidates in those eight years. Uh, we set this up to be really just flexible and convenient for you guys. Uh, we are fully online. But before I go into some of those details, let me also just mention this from Yale's perspective. Um, we only offer two financial certification programs through the Yale School of Management. Um, and it's the education and test prep for the SEMA certification exam and CPWA, as Gray mentioned um, earlier. And one of the reasons that we're so limited in that regard in, in terms of what we choose to deliver is accreditation. So if it's not accredited at the highest level, we're probably not interested in delivering um, that kind of certification or that program. And I believe still within the financial services industry, I think there's only a half a dozen, maybe a couple more that are accredited at this ANSI um, ISO international uh, uh, level. 
um, what I would consider the highest level of accreditation. So that's really important to us. I also want to mention this before I forget. Um, Gray mentioned that you can get that color-coded five-page PDF um, for the topics list from their website or our website, or you could uh, email them, but you could just email me as well. Um, I'm happy to send you the topics list and the formula sheet as, as, well, as, as well as their candidate handbook. So you don't have to go scrape that off their website as well. So you could email me if you want. Happy to have a dialogue with you. Jim.dobbs, J-I-M dot D-O-B-B-S at Yale.edu. Okay, so back to the program. Uh, let me just hit some nuts and bolts. You guys put those questions in and we'll be happy to take them as, as we go or at the end. Yeah, so it is fully online. That's a difference. I'm glad Chicago um, has a program that is hybrid. So for those of you who want the more in-person, you know, experience that kind of thing, they would probably be um, worth taking a good look at. But at Yale, it's fully online. It's also asynchronous. So you're going to move at your own pace. I think that's really important, having done this for so many years and now thousands of you. Um, some of you are brand new to this business. You know, you're in for a year, two years, three years. And a lot of this is new. You've never done a certification. Maybe all you've done is your Series 7, 63, some other securities exams. This is a much more, this is a much more difficult type of exam. An exam that relies less on memory and recall and more on comprehension and application. So you really need to understand these concepts and applications, not just memorize a bunch of rules like for the most part we did um, for all of our securities uh, exams. Again, asynchronous, so you start whenever you want. And, and I think that's important um, in that you're all different in terms of your, you know, your schedules and when can you start and how much time can you put in, which I'll talk about in just a second. So the fact that some of you are, are brand new, but some of you probably are doing this like I did when I was, I think, at least 15 years in the business when I earned my SEMA certification. And so those individuals may want to move a lot faster. We want to allow them to do that and and so that they don't stress out the the beginners, <laughs> um, we want to allow them to move through just as fast as, as they want. A month is on the shorter end of what it takes people to get through our program. Uh, Gray was right, four, five, six months maybe. Um, it's kind of the, the, the tops, the max for most of you if you're spending, say, eight to 10 hours a week of, of study. So that'll give you a, a decent idea. 100 to 200 hours is about the average for most of the candidates who have come through. That being said, I have no doubt some that take just weeks to get through, including their certification exam. You know, it's way under a hundred hours. And for some that take maybe eight, nine, 10 months to get through, it could be 500 hours if they just don't have a strong background um, coming, coming to, to our program. So that give you a little bit of an idea there, but happy to answer questions um in 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 those ways in our program you're going to start with the course everybody earning SEMA certification except for CFAs I think I think they can challenge the exam Greg correct me if I'm wrong but everybody else got to go through a, a registered education course so you're going to do that first if you choose Yale and that'll take you 30 to 40 hours to get through you're watching a bunch of videos but instead of being in our lecture hall in our classroom in New Haven you're just at home or at work or wherever, and it's all on demand. So you watch them, you know, as your schedule permits, and then you take tests after those. Those are online tests. They're just in the platform. They're not proctored. We just need a way to know that you were doing what we asked and you're following along, paying attention so that you complete the course. Once you complete the course, you're going to get a certificate from Yale, and we're going to let Gray and the crew know over at IWI, hey, Jim has passed the course. He's now eligible to register to sit for his exam. Now, you won't be ready to sit for your exam. Then you need to spend the rest of your time with us in our test prep um, program. That's kind of part B, if you will. Um, and you'll actually spend most of your time, I fully expect, in the test prep. The test prep's got summary slides of those 500 topics. It's about 1,000 summary slides of key concepts and applications, and then about... 
six or seven hours of video of me walking you through those slides, including telling you what I think is most and least likely to show up on your certification exam. Uh, and then lots and lots of practice questions, including a, a full length mock exam that is timed. Look, if you add up all the practice questions in all our 23 sections, it would be about seven mock exams worth of questions. So um, a lot of questions. That being said, the last thing I'll mention on kind of curriculum in that regard is remember what I said about this is a much more challenging exam than your uh, securities exams. This is more along the lines of CFP level type questions. I would even say a little bit more challenging than that on a question by question basis. Um, so we want to keep the, the focus off of memorization and on application. So studying practice questions alone, whether you choose Yale or Chicago, uh, that's not going to get this done. You're, most of you are not going to be able to pass this exam by just studying practice questions. You really need to get into the material, videos or live sessions at Chicago. Uh, we have about 2,000 pages of readings, including the, the textbook I did for SEMA, uh, published through Wiley. Uh, several years ago. So you just a heads up there, you need to get into the content, really um, take the deeper dive to be able to pass this exam. So kind of that's it in a nutshell on like what you would experience in the yield program, about how long it would take based on the 3000 people who have gone before you in our program. Hopefully that gives you a, a decent idea there. And I'll just stop talking there and see if we've got any questions. Great. Thanks a lot, Jim. I really appreciate that. And uh, it's great to get your perspective on the Yale program and some thought on the hours of study, as Jim mentioned, 100 to 200 hours of study. And then, of course, a few thousand pages of reading. So uh, you definitely want to get very familiar with the content um, and uh, focus on that application, as, as Jim said, not just memory recall. It's sort of applying uh, with those questions and really sort of understanding the material and being able to uh, to do that. So yeah, we've got a few questions coming in here now. Um, maybe we'll take one real quick because uh, we are focused on the Yale program here and then we'll save the rest for the end. But I got a, a one great question in here about the the changes in the SEMA curriculum. Um, and it's, uh, you know, Jim, there's, I don't think there's a better person on the call to answer that than Jim Dobbs uh, on the, some of the changes that happen here. Yeah, thanks, Gray. Um, and thanks, uh, whoever asked that question. That's a great one. So every four to five years, give or take, IWI and and the other organizations, they update their content. Um, I won't go through that whole process, but suffice to say that the topics will change and subsequently the exam will change just to keep the certification up to date as you would expect it needs to be. So that being said, the new exam, I believe, comes out August 1st, unless they've changed that. Um, that being said, I've done this for over 20 years with CFP, SEMA, CPWA, and the changes to this exam this time around do not seem that significant to me. Now, yes, the new topic outline, which applies to the exam beginning August, it does look at least on the surface to be noticeably different, but really what they did is just move some of the organization, kind of like where the the main topics and the subtopics under those live. They only added a, two or three new items that are significant, in my opinion. They removed a few as well. So not a lot of changes here. And I don't whether you're going through Yale or Chicago, I don't think you're going to need to make a lot of adjustments, particularly for those of you who are like, well, if I start now, maybe I can test before August if things go well. Okay, great, no problem. But even if it's after August for you, I just don't think there's going to be a whole lot of changes. Um, the way we're tackling it at Yale is right now we have worked up about a dozen new slides. Of course, we're going to add the the new content outline as we get closer to August. Uh, and then about 15 new practice questions, 15 out of you know, roughly a thousand practice questions already. So I just don't think this is, is going to be a big thing for you guys, as long as you're aware that there are a handful or two of changes and you need to, to, to study up on those, those issues. Other than that, I, I think you just move through as is. Right. Right. 
Well, there you heard it. There you have it. So it's, uh, it's uh, you know, as Jim mentioned. And uh, the other thing to note, too, is the certification exam is a separate entity than the actual education. So the IWI certification exam is delivered uh, completely separate from the education. That's an accreditation thing. And uh, so a lot of the practice questions you see are going to be very applicable to it from Jim's test prep. But you know, not everything is going to be identical. It's not going to be the same. This is meant to sort of prepare you. Jim's test prep is going to prepare you for that certification exam, which is deliver, delivered independently of the education. So just note that as well um, uh, when you go forward in selecting Yale or Chicago Booth. Um, so why don't we move forward here because we're getting into the uh, half hour. I want to get through the rest of the slides and then we'll answer. We've got a number of questions coming in, so I'll save at least uh, you know five five or eight minutes or so at the end. This is the uh, steps to success here. Okay, so number one, uh, Jim talked a little bit about maybe part B or part two. Uh, really, number one, the first thing you do uh, was you would you would become a member. So go to our website, uh, fill out you know create an account with your email address that you want our communications from, and a password. That's the first step, uh, and then. Go out, go ahead and fill in an application. These uh, go to your account dashboard in the top of your uh, account there and fill out the SEMA application. Now, I, I should say before that, and I'm going to talk a little after, we do have tuition reimbursement, or not tuition, but tuition assistance in, in the form of a scholarship. We have a foundation here, a newly create, created foundation, which helps fund that. Uh, if you do want to apply for a scholarship, as I'll talk at the end, Please do that before you enroll for the SEMA because you would receive a promo code if you do receive funding for that application. So I just wanted to note that before you even apply for SEMA. Um, so if you do receive the scholarship, you use that promo and then you would pay the 5,995 minus any corporate or, or scholarship discount there. Um, and then of course the executive education, which uh, Jim is representing today for Yale. And we also have the University of Chicago Booth School of Management, which uh, we can talk to you as well. Um, that's, you know, professors, academic professors, practitioners as well, uh, networking and Q&A. And so you go through the self-study, uh, take a number of quizzes as you go through each module. As Jim mentioned, it's, it's well over 100 hours of study, 150 to 250 hours, depending on your experience in the industry. There are quizzes after each module that you need to pass. Um, and then um, there are, there's, a, there's a formula worksheet that you will have when you take the final SEMA exam. Uh, that's not something you need to create, uh, the formulas. You just need to you'd be able to see them and apply. Uh, and then, of course, the final exam. That is the five-hour, uh, 140 questions on the exam. Uh, you take it either in person at, at, at a Pearson Testing Center, or you can take it through ProctorU. You can do it online, at home, at your office, in a quiet place where you can sit for five hours and, and, and get through the multiple choice questions. Um, so that's it. Those are that's the process. Uh, and again, Carrie and I can assist you if you have any questions along the way. Um, but this is the uh, scholarship that I mentioned here. Uh, we do have the Investments to Wealth Foundation here, um, which we uh, get corporate funding and individual funding from our members, uh, as well as other uh, practitioners in the field. Um, there is an eligibility requirement there, as you can see in the left of this slide. Um, if you do qualify uh, in any of those, um, you know, please you know, consider applying for the scholarship to give you some assistance. It is a need-based scholarship. So typically, if you're not getting reimbursed from a firm, if you're an independent RIA, uh, not getting much reimbursement and are in financial need, I would uh, definitely consider. Uh, the scholarship amounts range on the demonstrated need as well. So that's just a little uh, snapshot there. If you want to take a picture of that website, uh, that's where the foundation is, uh, as well as uh, information on the scholarship and, of course, <clears throat> the scholarship application. And so finally, just sort of the top reasons we get, we ask advisors and investment management professionals, you know, why did they uh, take the SEMA? What, what, how did it help them? Well, this is just a, some feedback that we've received. Number one, uh, increasing their knowledge of investment management, right? That's generally what it is if you're coming into the industry and this is a three-year requirement. So if you're a few years into the industry, you have a background or an undergraduate that's not finance or investments, this is going to help get to that next level. Uh, increasing your confidence with investment, <clears throat> offering investment advice to your clients, right? That's a big, that's the main driver of this, being able to drive those conversations with your clients, with your peers, with other 
uh, parts of the financial planning, whether it's institutional consulting or even if you're an investment advisor, right? How do you how do you guide your client on uh, helping them determine their portfolio, their portfolio allocation, and making recommendations if you're not a financial advisor to the to the FA on what they should be doing for their client. So I won't go through all of these, but these are just sort of a snapshot um, of, of all the reasons uh, to pursue our SEMA. So this is the last slide in presentation. Um, I wanted to open it up to questions. Uh, uh, we have a few minutes left in the in the presentation here. Carrie, I, and uh, Jim can help answer. And uh, gosh, we've got a bunch. So um, let's see where to start here. Jim, Jim was helpful on answering the the difference in the the SEMA curriculum. Uh, I'm going to get through some of these questions here. Yeah, as Gray's going through that one, Billy, I did see your your question regarding uh, Yale allowing you or not to use. Yale, um, once you've gone through the program. So I'll hit on that real fast as, as Gray is kind of teeing these up. Um, yeah, so whether you go through Chicago or Yale, they're both going to have their own policy. So if you choose Chicago, obviously you need to ask them. At Yale, um, I'm happy to say you can use Yale School of Management, School of Management going forward once you complete or pass our course, regardless of earning certification. Once you pass our course, you can use that in your LinkedIn, your bio, your resume, your Vita, et cetera, et cetera, as long as you always include Yale School of Management and then the specific course or program you passed at Yale SOM. So as long as you always include the name of the course, and there are actually three or four variations that are acceptable, then you can include that. And you can have it in your LinkedIn under education you're going to put the course in field of study and leave degree blank because obviously this is not a degree or for academic program. So hopefully that helps you um, in, in terms of that question, Billy. Good question though, thanks. Yeah. yeah, just to piggyback off of that real quick, we have a use um, a usage guide of how to use the marks. And some of that also includes how to you know promote the fact that you earned the certification through one of these top business schools. So um, there is a whole document that allows you to use digital badging and how to properly do that. Um, and and so we can certainly pass that along after the call. Good question. Uh, yeah, all great questions here. Thanks, Jim, uh, Carrie. And um, there was one other question here about additional fees. Um, that's a great question. So the total cost of the education is $5,995. But one fee that you won't see up front is uh, the certification fee. So you wouldn't see that up front because you haven't passed the exam yet, right? So when you do pass the exam, you become certified. You pay a $395 certification fee uh, on top of the $5,995. That will cover you for two years. That's your two-year certification. And you'll also have a membership fee, which is included in that $5,995. That's going to cover you for two years in two years, you will renew as a certificate and a member. So that we have three tier, we have a number of three tiers of membership here. Basic membership uh, is is sort of the lower membership where you would pay eight hundred ninety five every two years, but you also need continuing ed on that forty hours every two years. Okay, that's every two years. Uh, you would get that through our conferences, which are fantastic. Uh, at least twenty hours at each conference, or you would uh, attend. We have a lot of. We have hundreds of hours of online uh, CE here as well. So just an additional fee there that you may not be aware of when you do pay up front there with the fee. Um, let's see here. Let me get, oh, the, again, the cost. I think I just mentioned that, $5,995. $5, um, uh, here's a little question. The difference between the CFP and the SEMA, I'm happy to kind of jump into that a little bit just to give you an overall but you know the CFP is what it is. It's a financial planning designation. The Certified Investment Management Analyst is not as much financial planning. It's more investment management, investment allocation. You're not doing you're not doing really financial planning for your advice for your client. Uh, that's more of our Certified Private Wealth Advisor CFP, more of a planning designation, talking about taxes, estate planning, asset location, charitable planning, right? Those are the big things that you do in, as a for a financial plan. The SEMA is more embedded in that financial planning of the investment allocation of that plan, right? You have a client that has $10 million and they want to invest that entirely in the market. Well, how do you allocate that across portfolios and sectors? Not so much my client has $10 million. 
he's thinking about buying a house in Colorado and maybe selling a home here. And he has, uh, you know, thinking about doing, he's very charitable inclined and thinking about giving money to his colleges or schools. That's more financial planning, right? Year end. So a little different. Um, I don't want to get in too much in the curriculum of the CFP, uh, but really you saw really how the SEMA will differentiate from that. So a few differences. Um, There's a, a question here um, about specifically spending a lot of time on models and building portfolios. I wonder, Jim, if you were able to address yeah. that. Does this course address, you know, building models, building portfolios, different models? Um, can you can you speak to that question? Yeah, good question. So I don't think either program does a lot in terms of application in that regard. I will speak to the Yale side, which I'm obviously thoroughly familiar with. So you're going to go through the theory and application, but not in a modeling sense. So you're going to do all that. You're going to go back all through the uh, modern portfolio theory and post MPT, of course. We're going to spend as much or more time actually in factors. You know, we got equity, uh, size, and value versus growth. And then momentum kind of came out of that. And now there are easily over a dozen risk, major risk factors if you want to build a portfolio, an MVO portfolio using correlations to look at beta risk in different ways. So you're going to get a big dose of that in, in our program at Yale. So you'll have the foundation to then use that knowledge in those modeling software packages. We don't use any of those packages but I think if you go through the, the the course, at least you'll know what those inputs are. So then you can play around with the the optimization software packages. But we we stop there and, and don't move into the modeling uh, in, in that regard. So hopefully that helps. Uh, David, real fast, I did want to hit your, your question on calculators and statistics and all that fun stuff. So if you're new to a calculator or need to go buy one, go to tvmcalcs.com. It's a free website. It was down, but it's back up. TVM, like as in time value of money. TVM, um, uh, calcs, C A L C S dot com. Great tutorial on getting up to speed on your calculator. If you can do those 12 to 15 sample exercises he has for each of the most common financial calculators, in, including the HP 10B2 Plus, uh, then in the Yale program, you, you should be good to go. In terms of statistics, most of that at a basic level is covered in something called um, the Math for Investment Consultants, the old uh, IWI workbook that we still use in the Yale program. And you would just need to spend some extra time in that workbook uh, in our program. That ought to get you up to speed. So hopefully that helps with both those questions. Right, right. Yeah, thanks, Jim, for answering that. The calculators. Um, Great way to get some work on that. We also have some approved calculator uh, on our website as well. So um, I think we should wrap it up at this point. There are some questions, but we will answer them after uh, the webinar here. We're going to finish up right now. If anybody has anything else to add at this point, Carrie or, or Jim, I think uh, I think we're all set. Nope. Great. It was great to have you guys. Yeah. If you have any questions, reach out to Carrie or Gray or me regarding the uh, specific questions on the Yale program. We'll see if we can help you determine if this certification is a good fit for you and which program might be the better fit for you as well. Great. Great. Thanks, Jim. And good luck, everybody. And please reach out and uh, we'll all talk to you later. Have a great day. Bye-bye.